something's come on because I can see the front. <laughs> Now, if you watch the last few videos, you'll know that I picked up yet another project car for the channel. This time it's a VW Scirocco R that's been in a bit of a knock. I paid £5,500 for it, which is basically half price for a 2015 facelift model. But naturally, of course, it does need some work. On the mechanical side of things, it had a significant amount of top end rattle, which contributed to the lower price of the car. I did manage to solve this with a new chain and tensioner in the last video. And so far, the car seems to be running good. But there's still the matter of that destroyed front end. And the plan for today is to essentially remedy it with a mix of new and used parts i'll be honest the damage isn't as bad as it looks as the chassis is straight despite the car actually being classified as a cagri s insurance write-off which normally means structural damage i did actually confirm this on a report from car vertical before buying it and they incidentally are the sponsors for today's video now if you're not really familiar with car vertical it's essentially a website that allows you to obtain a full history check on any car all you've got to do is enter your registration or the vin now as usual i have got an example report just to show you how all of this works and today we're going to be taking a look at the c63 right so the top of the report you essentially get given a snapshot of the vehicle you searched for so in the case of this c63 we've got no problems any previous theft the mileage being tampered with or its financial legal status but there is an exclamation mark next to the damage icon so the records tell us that it was an insurance write-off more specifically a cagri s just like the shirako but this occurred in february of 2020 and my favorite bit if you head over to the photo section you can see the extent of this damage yeah i think it's safe to say that's had a bit of a shunt hasn't it folks i mean look at the state of that front end especially that driver's side wing is just completely vanished back of it all looks perfectly fine though as well as the interior apart from the airbags yeah at least with this report if you're going to view a car like this that had been pulled back on the road you know which areas to look out for right so there you have it it's nice and easy to use a car vertical website it saved me a bunch of hassle over the years for example the caddy and also its ttrs donor car both of these were checked with car vertical before bidding a lot of the times sellers either don't know or they're trying to hide it deliberately in which case with a report you can avoid all of this stuff and as usual i have got my own special incentive if you go click the link in my description and then use the code tr H, what that'll do is it'll save you 10 self in extra report. Yeah, as always, big thanks to Car Vertical for their continued support of the channel. Let's crack on with the Scirocco video. Right, so these are the bits we're going to begin with. We've got a brand new surround for the radiators. Now, this isn't an OEM part, and that's because I went on eBay and found this thing for £80 brand new, and the genuine one's around £350. And for a piece of plastic, which isn't really going to impact the safety of the car, I thought it's worth trying out the cheaper equivalent. We've also got a replacement fan as well. This is used, but it is from another Scirocco R that was breaking online. It's probably the same part number as a Mark 12 GTI, but it is pretty cool that it came off another Scirocco R. And we've got a replacement crash bar, which has the tab in the center that is missing from my one. And yes, brand new aircon radiator. Now this is a Nissan's one. I paid £70 for this as opposed to well over 200 for a genuine one. And again, it should do the job perfectly fine. Also, I don't know if you guys have noticed by now, but this video is in 4K. I've upgraded the camera, but I've kept the lens the same. So the field of view should be similar. I thought with all the detailed project stuff we're doing, like removing various clips and doing timing belts now and projects on salvage cars, I want to capture it in as much detail as possible. But it's all a trial anyway. This is my first attempt. So let me know down below in the comments if you think it looks good and if there's any improvements I can make. So removing the crash bar on one of these is exactly like a Golf. There's eight 16 millimeter bolts going into the chassis and the 40 30s going into the remains of what was once a rad pack surround. The destroyed aircon rad was next, it's held on by, you guessed it, more T30s. There's four on the front and one on the side where the pipes are located. One was already detached so there was no fluid to worry about and the other one was held in with what looked like a T45. Crusty aircon rad off. Right, so our intercooler is looking good, there's pretty much zero damage to it. Just needs a little cleaning. Next was the removal of the old fan. Again, more T30s and it slid upwards relatively easily. It didn't actually end up looking that damaged, but I still threw in the replacement as this old one was making a strange noise in the last video. From here is just a reversal of everything. The Nissan's aircon rad bolted up pretty well without any fitment issues. And it came with the two replacement O-rings that you will need. Then yeah, it was time for the new surround. One side. Quick little review so far of the eBay Rad Pack Surround for $79.99 or whatever it was. Pretty good. All of these holes line up as they should. The lower feet sat in perfectly. This all looks identical to the OEM. The top slam panel looks the same as well. We've got the guides there for the air duct to go in. So yeah, well worth the £250 saving, I think it was. All right, let's get the crash bar on. The good thing is there's far less rust on this one. Got a new bracket here as well, which will probably need a bit of adjustment. 
Right, so some pretty straightforward stuff there. Everything bolted on with zero issue, legit. If you could do an intercooler upgrade on one of these cars or a Golf, you could do what I've just done. Now we're gonna move on to the headlights next, but before I show you what I've done with those, make sure you go down and click subscribe to the channel if you are new here and you enjoy content like this. As you can tell, we're very VW focused and also the Caddy RS, which I know a bunch of you folks have been asking for an update on. This is gonna be one of the next videos coming up soon. We're getting an exhaust made. I'm loving all the feedback you guys have been giving on these more detailed videos. I enjoy making them and I'm slowly upgrading all the equipment as we go along. But yeah, make sure you stay tuned. All right then, what do you think's in here? Turn it around that way, because it's the correct orientation of what I can see inside. Yes, it is what you think it is. I won't start an unboxing channel just yet. Would you look at that? Completely brand new Scirocco R facelift headlight. Lovely stuff. And it's already broken. That's great, isn't it? Maybe all the facelift headlights are meant to be broken even when they're brand new. <laughs> Hopefully this one's all right. Yeah, that one's okay. Well, that kind of took the shine off the reveal a bit. One of them's already broken. Now I did buy these brand new from TPS. So I don't know if they got damaged in transport or they were already damaged when they were at the factory. Basically that trim piece there has come off but it looks to me like it may have snapped off. Can't really tell because it's a weird looking backing plate on there. Now I know some of you guys are already thinking they can't have been cheap and you're right. I paid 650 pounds each. I know it sounds a bit insane, but when you consider the fact that this Scirocco R was five and a half thousand pounds for a facelift car with 76,000 miles and when they're fixed, even as a category S to go for around 11, it was worth the investment because it's not like you can just randomly go ahead and find facelift or LEDs and on headlights. They're very rare. Now, in terms of the old headlights, they did work perfectly fine when we tested them at the salvage yard, but this back part of the housing has got cracks in it. Now, some of you were saying just swap this out for, I don't know, cover off another used Scirocco headlight, but they're all completely different to the facelift R ones. So I don't know how that would have worked. After swapping over the various modules from the old headlights and installing some new upper brackets, it was time to offer them up to the car. The only problem I noticed was the lower bolt tab on the passenger side it was slightly bent but that was easily fixed with some pliers and thankfully the wiring loom as well had no damage now with the driver's side i was going to install the old light so at least we could see the car in a somewhat completed state but pretty much every tab was broken so there was no way of putting it onto the car so what i did was i just temporarily fitted the new broken one something's come on because i can see the front <laughs> Yep, that's supposed to be full beam. Can hear it doing something, but it's not actually on. Now I realized afterwards, this is because I forgot to put in the bulbs. Yes, they do literally come as a bare shell, these new headlights. I was so focused on the modules, I forgot to focus on the most important thing, which is the actual bulb. But yeah, let's just move on to the bumper. Now, as you will recall, if you watched the introduction video, this car did come with its front bumper and it wasn't completely damaged. Most of the impact was absorbed by the bonnet, which is now on the floor. We have got a few tabs here they've got cracks on them but i don't think that will impact the way it'll sit onto the car we could always get it tidied up at a later date the only problem i've spotted is with this side at the end where obviously the screw is going to go in it's broken on the end now the grill was missing so i've had to go buy a new one yes it's very shiny this is an r facelift specific item we've got the outer frame also which is in gloss black and i also have got a genuine foam for the crash bar so at least a bumper will sit on nicely but before we do all of that i need to get rid of this horrible splitter that's probably the most well secured splitter i've seen fair play to them but no, thank you. Much better. With the splitter gone, I also attempted to remove some of this tape. It did leave quite a few marks, but realistically, this bumper is going to need repainting anyway, to be perfect. In terms of putting it on the car, don't go ahead and install it before the grill like I did. That works on a Golf, but not a Scirocco, as it needs to be tucked behind. You're better off attaching the grill first and then just offering it up to the car as one whole piece. <laughs> Right then folks, the front end's been mostly put back together. I'm quite pleased with the end results, even if we are gonna have to take that off again due to this headlight. But yeah, this section here is just so shiny compared to the lower bit now, it's almost a bit of a mismatch. I'm gonna have to make a decision as to what I'm gonna do with this bumper because of little bits like this 
broken tab on the end. I'm not too sure how perfect that can be made, but it's not like it's loose or anything. It's been fully clipped in on this side and screwed in. And on this side, I've got all the arch liner screws in, so that's not going anywhere. Now, pretty much all that's left is to get a bonnet fitted, and we'll do that when the car's on the ground. I'm gonna need a bit of a hand to line it up as well. But before we get to that, we need to fit some wheels to the car, and for that, I've gone for something different. Right, so that's one of the original wheels that came off the Scirocco R. It's a nine inch Cadiz. As I said, I am a big fan of them when they're in the original Dharma Cup finish, but not this strange gold situation with a poorly painted center cap. I may still put them on the car if I can get them refurbed, but for now I want to try something different. And that's what's back here, folks. Now this is a 1552 Holdshot RSR finished in black. It's a 19 by eight and a half, 45 offset. And I just wanna give a massive thanks to 1552 for supporting the channel. These were originally intended for the RS3, but because we haven't had a video plan for that car in a while, I thought what's best than to just try them on the Scirocco because I reckon they look very good. We've got them wrapped in the all new Continental Sport Contact 7s. And they're just an awesome looking motorsport-esque wheel. I reckon it really suits the side profile of that thing. Now these RSRs are much lighter as well, so it should help with the unsprung mass and just generally give you a better cornering feel. I'm gonna leave a link to those down below in the description make sure you check out 1552's website, Instagram, and all that good stuff. Now I am aware that these calipers look like a bit of a mess, but we're gonna save all of that for when we do some chassis mods or whatever, because I don't want to paint them on the car because the finish is never the same. Somehow this kind of works. Maybe it's the gold that made these calipers look terrible. Obviously they look better in blue, but it's not actually that bad. It just amazes me that the Scirocco originally came out in 2008 and this face if in 2014. It still looks bang up to date even now. Right, so for the bonnet, I decided to go for a used one. It's off another Scirocco on. Thankfully, it's the same across all models, pre-facelift, facelift, R, TDI, whatnot. So here it is. It's not in perfect condition. It's got a few little specks of rust at the end, maybe because of stone chips, because these cars are quite low, but it should be fine with a bit of a clean. And more importantly, it matches with the rest of the car's paint code. Right, so thanks to a helping hand from Sean, the bonnet went on pretty easily. There's two screws on either side, and then you just gotta reconnect the washer jets. The locking mechanism, however, was playing up, so I'm gonna leave that detached for now. But yeah, there's the front end of the Scirocco all in place. We did pretty decent with the lining up of the bonnet, but some of the lower areas, obviously they leave a bit to be desired. It's not exactly OEM spec, but I was never aiming for this thing to be perfect after today's video. And obviously it's all a bit of a learning experience. I've never put together a salvage car, so nothing ever goes back on just as you took it off as you would, for example, when you're doing an intercooler on a GTI that isn't crashed. But yeah, I'm loving the way this thing looks on the 1552 Holdshot RSRs. It is strange how the Scirocco almost swallows up an eight and a half J wheel like it's nothing. Now granted these are only a 235 tire, but that's a 45 offset, which is normally a pretty safe option on something like a Golf. But that looks like you could handle a 30 offset wheel because if you chucked a 15 mil spacer on it, it'd basically just about be flush. But yeah, we'll dial in all of that stuff at a later date. The main thing is the Scirocco actually looks like a car now. Yeah, I think that's enough talking. Let me know if you enjoyed today's video by dropping a like on it. Also subscribe if you're new to the channel and you enjoy this type of content. Follow my Instagram at tiahamza underscore to get updates in the meantime. And yeah, I'll see you in a few days with the next video. We're going to be returning to the R36 and also the Caddy RS as they're both well overdue to be finished. This is probably gonna be on hold for a bit as it's a usable car. Ideally, I only wanna have two projects in here at one time because it's not the biggest of places. But yeah, we'll get around to it all.